Hey guys, Randy from Belize Moto here, and today I'm going to give you a review on how not to hit road debris, and I'm not going to speed, there's always some inaccuracy in that dash, relax, relax, I swear, it's 45, but we're going to be good, because today I want to give you a review of my Bimota DB7. I've been riding this bike for the last, oh, two and a half weeks, and Honestly, I absolutely love it. The motor is great. See, that's what happens when you go this slow. Cars pass you. Danger coming from the rear. What good is that? Look, I like to ride fast. It keeps everything one dimensional, but whatever. Once again, I'm keeping this within the bounds of the laws so I can bring this video to you. So you're all welcome. I'm sacrificing my own personal pleasure, my own enjoyment of riding this motorcycle as fast as I want to, just so I can talk to you and show you what I think about this bike. So I'm going to power through, oh, it kills me, but I'm going to do it. Anyhow, the chassis on this Bimota is absolutely phenomenal. I've owned a lot of nice bikes. I currently own a lot of nice bikes. 38 is the count. Um, I'll double check it today, but I think I'm at 38 right now, which is quite a few. I mean, put it this way, I'm 37 years old. We're not even doing 38 miles per hour right now. That's how many 38 motorcycles is. Anyhow, I mean, speed limit's 35 here. I'm trying, remember, I'm trying to follow the law. So. <laughs> Back to the Bimota DB7. Aside from being absolutely gorgeous and beautiful and just rocking some phenomenally unique and great components from, you know, Marzocchi RAC50 forks to Extreme Tech. Yes, Extreme Tech rear shocks. I'm sure you've never even heard of an Extreme Tech shock. They are extreme. They are super high tech. They're very cool, very expensive, and... I don't know of any other OEM produced motorcycle that has ever featured an extreme tech shock. So, yeah, pretty rare. Um, anyhow, back to this bike. The handling is phenomenal. Yes, this video isn't the video that's going to show that and prove it to you, but you're just going to have to take my word for it and, you know, look at some of those uh, other videos we post with our uh, featured nameless, voiceless Ghost Rider. Or whoever that may be. Anyhow, back to the Bimota DB7. And what kind of multicolored freak show hypercar do we have passing us on the left? Everybody, take a guess. What do we have here? It's a Lambo. Welcome to Las Vegas. <laughs> and we got a green light. Guys, will I even finish this review before I get to the shop? See, it's hard to stay focused at 33, 34 miles per hour. It just kills you. You know, you want to go fast. And you got this nagging thing known as the law keeping you down. Typical. Oh well. You know, hey, the cameras will be off later and um, <laughs> the real fun will start. But anyhow, this bike is amazing. If you own a Bimota DB7 and you actually ride it and ride it well, I imagine you know exactly what I'm talking about and you would agree with my review. If not, hey, post up. Tell me. Tell me your version. In my opinion, this bike needs only one thing, and that's a slipper clutch. But guess what? It'll get one. I mean, this is Belissimoto. We're the home of slipper clutches. If you want to go to a place, pull up, and know there's a slipper clutch in stock, a top-of-the-line, world-class slipper clutch as used by world superbike teams, well, this is the one place in the world you could actually go and have that guarantee, have that availability. What a beautiful bike. I absolutely love it. Yeah, look at that. There's those Marzocchi forks, Brembo brakes. Currently, yeah, it's got that beautiful Bimo Bimota clutch cover, which will stay on it. And you can see there's a cool fancy pressure plate and some spring retainers, but that will come off. We'll put a slipper clutch in there. Like I said, it's the only thing this bike really needs. That exhaust, well, beautiful titanium slip-on made by Zard. DB killers have been removed. There is no catalytic converter. It's a nice hollow pipe. 
Sounds awesome. No need to change that. The uh, little box you see down there, also no cat. Don't ask me how, don't ask me why, but it's a hollow, empty uh, echo chamber, and uh, what can I say? No complaints on the sound. Back to the handling, back to the chassis on this bike. To me, it's very impressive because I don't think by, I don't look at Bimota, I don't think of Bimota and say, oh, you know, these guys are number one in the world, they're racing in MotoGP every year, they're out there, they're pushing the limits, you know, I'm sure that whatever chassis creation they make is by far the best. No. How I look at Bimota is, hey, Geo, what should we make of this year? I don't know, we got some flat pipe, maybe we make part of the frame this way, and Hey, use your CNC machine and you make part of the frame that way. We stick it together. Yeah, it will look cool, right? Yeah, we'll find out later. You know, <laughs> sorry for the terrible accent, but that's just what I imagine goes through the mind of a Bimoda designer, a Bimoda engineer. Um, sorry, Bimoda, but, you know, what can I say? It worked out. It worked out beautifully. The end result is... One, really, of near perfection. Um, I think the closest bike I could compare this to would be my 1199 Superleggera, which is a phenomenal, phenomenal bike. I enjoy riding this one a little bit more. I don't know if it's faster. I can't say that. It probably isn't. But it's darn fast, just like the Superleggera. Um, the seat is maybe a little bit less comfortable, but the seating position is better. Um, the handling, handling of that Superleggera is amazing, but it's all about this uh, swing arm and floating rear shock assembly. It's straight out of MotoGP. As you can see, it's really cool, really unique. There's no connection here. How does it work? You know, everybody asks. It's really, really cool how the linkage is set up, how it's done, how it works. Anyhow, the end result is a bike that doesn't really wheelie. It, it, it wheelies a little. It wheelies. It's fun to wheelie, but um, it wheelies well. It squats in. Does it doesn't just pop up, you know? It squats in like a MotoGP bike, you know. If you watch a Desmo Sedisi or a, an Aprilia RSV4RR, do one of their practice starts. You see, I mean, they've got all these ride height control devices now, but go back a few years and you'll see how the bike squats in and lifts up just a little and how the control is very very nice that's what this Bimota DB7 managed um, really good job Bimota alright you've heard me talk long enough Randy from Belisimoto